Over the years, the outboard engine has become more and more computerized. The computers have gotten more and more complex and the things that they can do and show you as the boat operator is actually quite amazing. With these complexities though comes a ton of different wires and sensors. So what all these sensors and wires do can be extremely confusing if it's not something that you are used to seeing and messing with. Which is why it's so important for you to know what the most important sensors are and what they do. We'll concentrate on the five most essential sensors for most of the video, but let's cover some, how do you say, honorable mentions sensors. You want to remember all of these sensors can vary in what they are called, and how they are used as far as the criticalness of the sensors reading to the computer depending on the brand and model of the engine that you have. But they all have the same basic functionality. We'll start with a super common one being the water and fuel sensor. This sensor can either have two prongs on it and it can be a float system as well that just lets the engine know if there is water accumulating in the fuel. Since water weighs more than fuel, the water will sink to the bottom of the cup or filter where the sensor is located and that turns the sensor on, telling the computer that there is water in the fuel. For trim sensors, these just let the engine know the trim angle of the unit. Because of where they are located though, they are prone to failure and eventually stop reading and start giving us trouble. Then there are these sensors here. They are called knock sensors. These basically read the vibration of the engine and help the computer adjust the timing depending on what it is picking up. Then we have pitot sensors. What a pitot sensor or a speed sensor is, it takes the water coming from the little hole in the front of the lower unit and based on that pressure, it determines the speed that you are traveling at. and gives that reading to the speedometer to show you how fast you are moving. Because of all the advancements in the GPS and chart plotters though, these are becoming less and less important. Not to mention that hole always gets clogged up anyway and you lose the reading. The intake air temperature sensor, or IAT, does exactly what the name says it does. It reads the temperature of the incoming air that the engine is breathing. The computer uses this when it determines different things about the timing and the amount of air that it uses. What you should know is that colder air is denser than warm air. That is because it is more compact and the molecules are closer together, which results in more oxygen being fed to the engine when the air is cold. This results in a better fuel to air ratio and can increase the fuel economy of the engine. There is also less moisture in the air because it is more compact, which is another reason why hotter climates closer to the ocean are harder on the engine's insides than cooler climates. Back to the sensors though, we have the water pressure sensor, or also called the block water pressure sensor or cooling pressure sensor. This reads the water pressure in the engine being produced by the water pump impeller in the lower unit. This sensor is actually pretty important depending on what brand and model you have, because some engines will put you into guardian or limp mode if it does not see water pressure. It makes the engine think that it is not getting proper cooling water and runs the risk of overheating, so it restricts your RPM. Shift position switches and shift cutoff switches, these switches let the engine know what gear position the lower unit is in. They usually turn on when in neutral and off when in gear. Then the cutoff switch will drop out a cylinder or two when you go from in gear to the neutral position. This allows the load to come off of the lower unit's clutch dog when going in and out of gear. 
Basically, it lowers the engine RPM to help take the stress off of the gears in the lower unit when you shift, to help the lower unit last longer and keep it from blowing up, which is another reason you want to shift smoothly. What you can do to prolong your lower unit is whenever you are coming off plane, slowly go from speed to the gear detent position with the handle. This allows the RPM to come down and then you can quickly pop the handle into neutral. Don't shift it slowly, that is why the lower unit gears will grind when you shift. And back to the sensors again, we'll start with the top 5 essential sensors by talking about the crank position sensor. This sensor is what reads the RPM of the engine. There are usually little tabs on the flywheel and as they spin around, the CPS basically counts them and that information is used to tell how fast the engine is spinning. Without this sensor, the engine generally won't even start. Because it doesn't know what's going on and the computer can't see if the engine is spinning or not. This is also used together with the cam position sensor and this sensor does almost the same thing except it is reading the position of the camshaft and where the valves are in relation to which cylinders are opening which valves. Most engines will not even start without the CPS reading and will be put into a reduction if the cam sensor fails. Next is the manifold absolute pressure sensor or the MAP sensor. This reads the air pressure that is inside of the air manifold right before it goes into the cylinders. The important thing about this sensor is that it lets the computer know the manifold pressure, but it also reads the barometric pressure of the location you are at when you first turn the key on, which is important because if you usually boat in say Florida where you are only a few feet above sea level, the air pressure at this elevation is going to be greater than it is at a higher elevation. So if you take your boat from Florida and you go up to say Colorado where the air pressure is lower and the air is colder, you will lose engine horsepower and performance. But the map sensor reads this information when you turn the key on so it allows the computer to know how much fuel to give the engine to help avoid this loss of power. Whereas older carbureted engines you would have to change out the jets and the carbs to get this power back and sometimes you still have to change the propeller as well. Moving on to the temp sensors. Now there are many different temp sensors that can be found all over the engine depending on the model. You'll find cooling water temp or block water temp sensors, oil temperature sensors, head temp, supercharger temp, and even exhaust gas temperature sensors all of these variations of sensors just let the engine computer know how hot things are getting while you are running. An overheated engine after a certain amount of time can turn into a failed engine, leaving you with an expensive decision to make. So these sensors help to avoid that overheat issue and most of you already know about the cooling water system that avoids this issue because you've seen our video on why outboards overheat. Okay, now we are down to the last two sensors that are vital for the engine to run properly and keep you out on the water. One of those sensors is going to be the TPS or the throttle position sensor. This sensor lets the engine know at what angle the throttle plate is at, allowing it to know and regulate how much air is entering into the engine, then with that reading it allows the engine to regulate how much fuel it puts into the cylinders. We've talked about this volume of fuel a lot, so I'll just say that this is done by what is called injector duration, which is just the amount of time that the computer supplies power to the fuel injector, keeping the injector open. The longer it stays open with the correct fuel pressure, the cylinder will consume all of that fuel that it can get. So when the computer sees all of these readings from all these sensors, it changes the time that the injector is opening allowing it to regulate the amount of fuel that it supplies. Then with the TPS, it is regulating that air supply being taken in as well. By closing the throttle plate, it shuts off the air supply, and by opening it, it consumes more air. Bringing us to our last sensor that we have yet to discuss, but it plays a huge role in how your engine runs, putting it on the list of the most important sensors of an outboard giving us the perfect spot to stop and hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm, letting YouTube know that they should share this video with other boaters. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel because we make helpful, informational videos just like this 
every Tuesday at 445 Eastern Standard Time. And the last sensor that you should know about is going to be the oil pressure sensor, which shouldn't be a surprise. Without oil, no engine will last very long. And without the right amount of oil pressure, the oil won't be able to circulate through the engine, properly lubricating all of the moving components that make up the outboard that gets you from spot to spot while out on the water. If anyone knows of a boater that could use this information, go ahead and share it with them. Visit us at bornagainboating.com and we look forward to seeing you next week.